The individual road race for amateurs would be based on 10 laps of the same course, making a total of 177 kilometers. 234 riders on the start with 60 nations represented, and only 34 of these nations would go through to the Olympic Games next year. Well, with 10 laps of this course to be covered, the riders have got to go 300 meters every lap, making a total of almost 3,000 meters of climbing during the course of the afternoon. And as you can see, it really is a difficult start to the amateur row race because there are so many riders and it's so difficult to move to the front. The important laps are the first couple of laps because that's when you really have to be near the front. Got a chance to see there that one or two of the British riders had an awfully bad start. This starting positions are actually picked by lots and if you don't get a good start it is very difficult to move up to the front you see they start out of the blocks very often you'll find in the amateur road race the first lap is the fastest we get a chance here to look at the course 17.7 kilometers the difference in altitude from start to finish is 315 meters you see they start there at the bottom they move all the way up to the top of the climb over the top and back down to the finish line the first part of the race was dominated by a long breakaway by Marco Fincato of Italy. He was soon joined on the fifth lap by Matthew Stevens of Great Britain, Danny Nelson of the Netherlands, and a Colombian rider, Jose Luis Vanegas. But as we join the race on lap eight, there are still four riders in the lead, and this eight-man chase group has got an awful lot of South Americans in it. Victor Becerra from Colombia, number two. Also, Pedro Alvaro Rodriguez of Ecuador. Jose Luis Vanegas was in the breakaway, but his teammates were chasing behind. Interesting to see this number now coming through, 120, is the Ecuadorian rider. He also rides on a Colombian team, so the Colombians will be right behind him. 183 there going through. In fact, was Daniel Sagnolin from Italy, a winner of almost 40 races this year. 182, Valentino Foix is getting information from the referee who's explaining just exactly what's happening at the moment. Four riders in the lead, one man chasing, and then you've got this group here. Seems to me as if there's an awful lot of discussion going on in this group at the moment. If they want to get back up to those leaders who've got something like one minute and 23 seconds lead, they're going to have to get themselves organized. But with two Italians, I don't really think they're going to make a concerted effort. Number 50 there from Venezuela, Manuel Guevara, sitting at the back a little bit. It's amazing how well these Colombians and Venezuelans have ridden in this world championship. It's been a difficult course. Danish rider on the back here, Nicholas Bo Larsen. Another chance to see the Ecuadorian. Here we join Marcus Anderson, who's in the middle between the two groups. There are four riders in the lead, as we've said before. Anderson is trying to get across. He's been trying for the last two laps, and he's hovering at round about 30 seconds off the leader. It's a very difficult move to be in here at the moment because he can't make his mind up whether to carry on with this effort to try and catch the four leaders or to wait for the chasing group of eight riders behind. He's using an awful lot of energy, and I can tell you it's very, very hot out here at the moment. Chance there to see the Viking tattoo on his sleeve. And these are the four leaders. These are the men he's chasing. On the front there from Great Britain, Matthew Stevens. In second place, Vanegas from Colombia. Third place, Danny Nelson. And there is an interesting story because Danny Nelson was a former professional. He rode the Tour de France in 1993. And at the end of that year, an examination on his heart showed a heart murmur. And the Dutch Federation refused to give him a professional license, so he reverted to the amateur status. This year he rode superbly, finished second in the Open Championships of Holland, only being beaten by the big professional teams, and now here he is at the front of the World Championships. Anderson trying to get into contention. The time split at the moment, 23 seconds. He really is doing whatever he can to try and get up there, but now the chase group here have closed down to one minute at the moment. Valentino Foix, 182, looks over his shoulder to see what the time split is. This is Larsen from Denmark. A little bit of disorganization coming into the group at the moment there are an awful lot of South Americans here the two Italians are trying to slow it down because they feel that their man Fincato has a great chance in at the lead well the altitude here in Colombia really has been an advantage for the South Americans 120 there a rider from Guatemala a country we don't see too often in international cycling Felipe Lopez and out on the course the attack still coming thick and fast I think in fact the rider at the front here is a rider about to get lapped as we can see, the group fanning across the road. The Italians at the front 
waiting for somebody to take up the chase. They're in a strong position at the moment because they have a man in the breakaway. And Valentino Poir there with his jersey unzipped, always looking over his shoulder to try and see what is happening behind. I think these riders are a little bit scared about the main field coming back, but I can tell you boys, there is no main field behind because the race is scattered all over the Andes. And what an incredible race this has been for turning around the books. It looked to me as if it was all over. Then with one lap to go, Danny Nellison attacked. And this man now, Daniel Sonolin, is trying to get back into contention. He's 15 seconds behind at the moment. He's flying along. He looks a lot stronger than the Dutchman. But it's all going to happen in the next few kilometers. Further down the slopes, there's a big fight for third place. This is Pedro Alvaro Rodriguez of Ecuador. He's being attacked by Victor Becerra of Colombia, and the Colombians want him to fly up this mountain for the last time because he could take a bronze medal home to Colombia tonight. I think everyone in the crowd is behind him. They won that bronze medal, but up the slopes here, what is happening is Sonolin is chasing, and all the time the gap is coming down. It's 12 seconds. He can't see him, but if he could get along straight away, Danny Nellison would be at the end of that straightaway. The gold medal would be there, and that is what the Italian wants. And this is the man who's got that gold medal on his shoulders at the moment. There's about two kilometers left in this race. Danny Nellison is the man that they would not give a professional racing license to. They said he was unfit because of that heart problem. But at the moment, he is flying around these corners. He's taking all the risks necessary to stay at the front of the race. Just a little bit further away from me, I can see his uncle, John Nellison, who's supposed to be commentating for Dutch television, but he doesn't want to say anything. He thinks he may well jinx his nephew's chances of winning this title. He looks over his shoulder. Nellison realizes now that he may well have what it takes to get that title. Behind him, a little bit further down the road, is Daniel Zanolin of Italy. He was about to catch him on the final descent there, but he could be running out of time. Nellison is down on the saddle here. He's pushing everything that he can out of those legs. They're like pistons. This man has ridden an incredibly good race. He was dropped nearly every time we went over the climb. He came back on the descent. He's ridden so sensibly. He's ridden the best tactical race I think I've seen him ride in his career. And it may well be that he's going to get the best victory of his life today. There's only one thing going through his mind at the moment. That's looking for the red kite that will signal to him that he's only got one kilometer left to go. And then he will know that the World Championships is in his pocket. There are a couple of riders in front of him. Don't worry about them. They're almost one lap behind this man who is flying along at the moment. And it could well be that the Dutch are going to have a world champion tonight. One last look over his shoulder and he can't see anybody there because the gap is about 200 meters, 13 seconds or something like that at the moment. There you can see the finishing straight, not long to go. He knows that the title is his. He pulls up his collar, a very professional move for a man who wouldn't be given the license to race as a professional. He's into the final few meters now and he's got chance to save a victory, which really will be a sweet revenge for him. Next year he will join the ranks of Jan Raas. And you can see as he jumps over that little obstacle in the road there, he's still got a little bit of strength left and an awful lot of reflexes. This man has ridden a great race. He's going to come up to the last two or three hundred meters now. Look at the face. Last look over his shoulder. He realizes now that he's got a signal to the people in the car. A look across at the TV camera. And this, I'm sure, will be the crowning moment of his career. This is the last time we'll ever see an amateur road race championships because the sport will become open next year. And as this Dutchman comes to the line, he's going to write his name in the history books. 100 meters to go. He looks back and a long way down the finishing straight there. You can see the Italian, but we've got two riders in front of the picture. They have been lapped. And Danny Nellison is the road racing champion of the world. I don't think he can believe it as he cruises into the pits. This man is so happy. I think those must be tears of joy. And that won't be the same for Daniel Zanolin, who comes over the line to take the second place, the silver medal. He was so close to catching up, but this is the sprint for third place. That's Rodriguez of Ecuador in the front there, but the Colombian Becerra has started the sprint, but I think it's going to be a little bit too early. The crowd are shouting him on. They want him to get the bronze medal. He's out on the saddle in the middle of the road. He's giving everything he's got, but you know, he's starting to weaken a little bit. The Ecuadorian is going to come by him. The Ecuadorian is coming by him on the left-hand side. Look at this. What an incredible sprint. That's going to be the third place for Pedro Alvaro Rodriguez from Ecuador. The Colombian Becerra will come in in fourth. Well, a superb ride for this man. Matthew Stevens was at the head of affairs for almost 120 kilometers. He will come across the line in eighth place. A great ride by the Brit.
Danny Nelson listens to the Dutch national anthem and realizes now that he's the champion of the world. Next year, he'll join the professional ranks. Well, that really was a superb event, and not very often do you see five South Americans in the top ten of the World Road Racing Championships. There on the podium to join him is Daniel Gianolin from Italy, and in third place, Pedro Alvaro Rodriguez takes the first medal at the World Championships for Ecuador.